This might be the best fishing mystery box of all time. So we're gonna go ahead, open it and see what we got. Oh my gosh, he was in the mat. Oh, he's running. Welcome back to the Fishing with Norm YouTube channel. Comment is popping up down below. Let's go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, leave a comment down below on this video for your chance to be in next video's comment of the day. Guys, you absolutely love the unboxing videos that we do on the channel. So today we have a absolutely massive one for you. It's a brand new box that I don't even think anybody has unboxed on YouTube yet. It is the Mystery Tackle Box Juggernaut Bass Fishing Case. So this bad girl comes with 16 to 22 items at $140 value. I picked this up at uh, Dick's Sporting Goods for $90. So there's basically $50 worth of free fish fishing lures in here and if you use code norm or code norm 10 on mysterytacklebox.com will be linked down below you can get your first box for as cheap as ten dollars if you can't tell today's video is sponsored by mystery tackle box because i'm holding two of them one's a little bit smaller than the other but they're both usable boxes and they're both great in their own ways not dependent on the size of them. Shout out to Mystery Tackle Box for sponsoring today's video. This is the box I get sent to my door every single month. And I actually have two of them coming to my door every single month because you can fill your tackle box up the easiest and cheapest way with these bad girls. It's 20 bucks, but $25 worth of lures come in here. If you use code NORM, use the link down below in the description. You get your first box for as cheap as 10 bucks and you can get like a subscription for 12 months. But if you just want to try it for one, you could technically cancel and get like $15 worth of free baits. It's like the best way to get tackle. With $25 worth of lures, this is $90, but you get a free $50 worth of lures in here. And we have box number three. 332. I don't know why the sticker's on there upside down. But we're gonna unbox this bad girl and go fishing with her today. But I'm super excited. The only fishing mystery box I've opened that's more expensive than this was like that wooden box, and I can't even remember the name of it for Mystery Tackle Box. And they literally made only a couple hundred of those. These are gonna be available in like all Dick Sporting Goods and maybe on their website too. So go check the link. But yeah, I think this is the oldest claim of boxes ever made for $90 at $50 worth of free stuff in it. I don't even think the big fishing crate had that much value. This might be the best fishing mystery box of all time. So we're gonna go ahead open it and see what we got oh snap they put your boy on the box discover new fishing products and techniques there's a picture of me on here which is pretty cool that they put that on there what's inside 16 to 12 items from top brands around the world tailor made booklet full of tips trips and instructions five limited edition fishing decals oh snap custom poster to hang on your favorite setups next to your favorite setups I dropped out of college, guys, forgive me. Access to your digital bait card so you never lose the tips and tricks for the lures in your box. It's like Christmas, but it's March. Oh, also we have a whole audience behind me. Show them real quick. Manager Jason, cameraman Tyler, and then Mason, who's- Assistant to the manager, Mason. Can one of you come over here with me? I feel so, I need somebody. It's just like all three. I have four people looking at me at the same time. I can only talk to the camera. Jason, yes. We're actually going fishing today. Funny enough, we opened up a different juggernaut box. SC card vanished. So we basically already opened it, but this is a different number box. There's different lures in here. So it's still going to be a surprise. So if you get this box, you might not get exactly what we have in here. Just make sure you have the number the same. If you get a different number, it could be different lures. Yeah, there's a frog in this one. A little, a little bit upset, but Jason, you ready to open the box? Ready. Any any hopes? Any dreams in frog? here? Just a frog. Just a frog. That's it. You want like a spinner bait, rattle trap? It's a frog. Worms. Let's open it up. And so Jason and I are going to be doing a one v one today. Oh, don't look! Don't look! Let's grab one lure at a time, switch off, and then whatever lures we get, we're allowed to use in today's video. How many times have you been fishing before, Jason? Like at least three, I think. Lure number one. We have the Sakoshi Bog, which is a fire little uh, Ned rig. It's actually what I caught my PB smallmouth on up in Chicago. And these little guys, you throw them on a little Ned rig, just like the Rattlin Neds or anything else. It's, I think, over Cinco, probably the number one lure to catch the most amount of fish on. Like, if you don't catch them on a Ned rig, you just weren't meant to catch fish that day. So if you're down to the Ned rig, you know it's been a tough day, but it just, it works. Sometimes if you just want to catch them, this is like the number one. So for numbers, you might be in trouble, man. It's like the best lure you could possibly throw. All right, let's see. Ooh. Oh snap, Mr. Moneybags. <laughs> Baby bull says so like $18, doesn't, $19. It looks like a frog though. So the video is like sponsored by Mr. Tackle Box. So you're supposed to like lures. Oh, uh, you're supposed to like them. Oh, yeah. that's sick, dude. <laughs> Mystery Tackle Box, if there's not a frog in here, Jason is gonna be livid. No joke though, the guy who makes these, basically they mass produce them, but he made handmade like really big ones. They were like 130 bucks. It's my first ever swim bait was the Micah Triton Bull Shad. I'm jealous of that. We might have to make some trades here. I went ahead and grabbed the, the Headhunter. So this one's really cool too, especially for bed season. Like I said, guys, these boxes, they kind of do them season specific. So this is a great bed fishing lure because bass hate when bluegill eat little eggs off of their beds. And this guy is front weighted. So he goes nose down and you kind of drag 
bag it just like a Texas rig, but it looks like a bluegill is just down there eating little eggs off the bed. This is a fire little lure, and it's weedless too, so you get through a ton of grass. When you set the hook, the hook is actually behind these fins right here, so you can bring it through grass real easy, but when you set the hook, it'll come exposed. Cool little lure right here, and a uh, great little action on them, so. Lure number two. Go for it, Jason. Yes, sir. All right, a skip jig. Oh yeah, uh, the skip jig. But it looks pretty neat. Doesn't look like a frog though. <laughs> Doesn't look like a frog. <laughs> Jigs are, especially up north, like that's a big, big thing. Next in the juggernaut box, I'm feeling something big. Oh yeah, well bam, the vile bugs. Once again, one of my favorites because you can rig them up in so many different ways. So you can rig it up on a Texas rig, fish beds like right now, but what I like to do too on the back of like a chatterbait or a swim jig, you can rig them up sideways. And it looks like a little bluegill swimming these two little tails, you'll have them rigged up like that. It's a fire little bait and it comes in like this nice casing too. So it keeps them all nice and straight so you don't get all your lures bent up. Oh dude, I'll take this. So you're in trouble. Oh, I got- It kind of looks like a frog. So like- It kind of does look like a frog. I could use one of those. Ones. All right, next lure, Jason. All right. All right. Ooh. Okay, so four inch. Some little paddle tails, little paddle action. Just if they have like two feet on the back, a little wider on the stomach, and they look like a frog, that'd be great. Man, dude, Mr. Dagobah's gonna fire me after this review, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Especially spring and fall time, they're eating up on shad. Spring, the shad are smaller. Fall, they get bigger and they die off in the winter. So that's like the four inch is the perfect size for spring. Next, we have the Junior Scout. This is actually one of my favorite little glide baits. You guys know if you've been here from like 5,000 subscribers before, which I guess would not be a lot of you. I used to only throw big swim baits and just go all week to chase one bite. And this is an awesome lure to do it. And this is actually in the smaller size, which is also perfect for springtime. Bass are just eating up on shad. It's their number one forage this time of year is uh, shad. So if you throw anything that looks like it or shiners, whatever you guys have in your lakes and bluegill, they're eating up on bait fish more than worms, more than craws. It's a uh, bait fish that they're after so if you throw anything that represents it you're gonna have a good eye to catch a one especially a big one you know match the hatch as they say a little glide bait i'll take that i'll take that i'm happy i'm happy with my selections you better step your selecting game up yeah, i don't see any frogs all right there you go the zinger spinner bait you know if there's one thing i'm not going to use sorry one thing i'll use besides a frog just a spinner bait you gotta, you gotta love a spinner bait it's a classic man yeah dude he goes back before we were even born people were catching giants on spinner baits. I just, I just understand how you're not going to get excited unless it's a frog. So this feels soft. Oh, let's go, dude. You're you're in trouble. Are we going to do biggest fish or most fish today between the two of us? My biggest fish because I'm not good at catching most fish, you know? This might be a most fish type of lure, but it could catch a big one. It's basically like a little sinko. It has a little segment here so it can swim in the water a little bit more. And basically anything that just looks like a stick is going to catch fish. So I've never used the Lake Fork Trophy Lures one before, but that's why I like it in the mystery tackle boxes. You get to try new lures. So I'm, I'm taking that all day. We're going to be giving this box away because we already unboxed a different box. So if you guys want to enter, all you have to do is be subscribed, leave a like on this video, and comment down below your favorite lure in this whole entire box. But we're going to be giving away this exact box, all these lures, completely packaged and everything, sent out to one of you guys. So we'll announce the giveaway winner in the next video pinned in the comment section, just so it's easy for you guys. Oh, the clickbait. Little chatter action. I mean, it looks like a spinner bait, so maybe it's good, you know? Dude, if you think about it, you kind of had clutch pulls here because you could put on the jig, you could put the swim bait on the back of the spinner bait, and you could put the swim bait on the back of the chatter bait. So you have like a trailer for literally all three things you've got. Easy money, dude. Easy money. Oh, I found the book. All right, so it's kind of cool about the box, guys. It comes with a book, so you can read everything about all the lures that come in it, and like it tells you like where to fish them, how to fish them, what times of year they would be best. These are kind of cool to read. Put them on the back of your toilet, and when you're taking a fat dump, just uh, read up, get some knowledge. You know, you don't need to play Angry Birds or Animal Crossing. Get up on your bass knowledge. Honestly, I didn't even want to spill that secret to you guys. The only reason I catch fish is because I read those books on the toilet, and I'd spend hours on the water, did nothing for me. I started reading on the toilet. I'll just leave it at that. I just not crapping lures out of here. I got a net gator, so that's pretty cool. You guys know what a netco is, but you just wear it to protect yourself from the sun, wind burn if you're on a boat. I don't like to do that though. I don't believe in keeping myself beautiful. I like to look rugged, so probably won't be wearing that, but you get one of you guys can have it if you win. <laughs> Jason, you're feeling in there just, just makes me feel weird. All right, all right. <laughs> you're way, you're, your arm is way too long in there. <laughs> you just grab something. We got the easel jig football jig. You could throw that same trailer on there too. Honestly, my vile cross would be fire for that, but uh, you got the swim baits, so you could swim it. There's a beautiful jig right here. Uh, it's about time I pulled a jig. Jason's pulled like three of them. I was getting a little jealous, so a little finesse jig here. I am all about that action. Here we go. Bullet weights. We got bullet weights, which I don't really need because I have all jigs and uh that could be community bullet weights because i, I kind of want them oh oh snap got the the runt dives zero to three feet i don't know how he's at you dive zero feet but it dives zero feet You're like a frog dives zero feet so you probably like that one that's true i could just you know, work it like a frog that's perfect <laughs> 
we got ourselves a crankbait. It was about time a crankbait showed up. A lot of times in Florida, guys, we don't use like build crankbaits, or at least I don't, because there's so much grass. People are probably gonna hate on me for that. I'm sure somebody has used a crankbait in Florida, but we like to use the lipless, at least to my parts. But that is a awesome lure, because crankbaits, a lot of this stuff in here is actually really expensive if you were to buy it individually, so. I am all about that. This dives three to five foot, so that's pretty much, that's perfect depth for a lake and a pond, so. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have GOP, though. We're, we're getting low on the box, dude. There's been a lot of stuff in here. Oh, this, oh, that's exactly go. what I was talking about, there the lip list. Well, you're definitely not getting that because I got it, so. Oh, perfect. Pack of hooks to go with the bullet weights. That's what's cool about, like, a mystery box is I want to be able to take the mystery box out and just go fishing with it, not have to bring any of my own tackle. The fact that it came with bullet weights and hooks is pretty freaking cool. I'll take it. I'm throwing that in the community pile right there. Okay. This is the last thing in the box. And it's little beads. When you're rigging this up, you put your bullet weight on first, then you would rig the bead on, then you would tie your hook on. And basically, it makes a little bit of noise down there, so it makes a little little like that just draw some attention so in dirty water a lot of times i like to throw a, uh, a little bead on there just adds a little bit of noise you know some people swear by it some people don't it's a cool thing to have in your box and a little life hack you can go to a hobby lobby or an arts and crafts store you can buy like a thousand of these for like eight bucks so a little hack you can save a ton of money going and buying these sweet is that everything are we good don't forget we got swivels which is always nice you always need those we got a ton of stickers that's sweet oh we have a chart that tells you basically everything that came in the box. It tells you if it's good or not. Like, so in season or not in season. So what to throw when. So that, that's helpful. Yeah, I mean, there's only one thing I disagree with on this chart is that Frog has three red spaces. But, I mean, it should just be green. Just green all the way across, you know? I think midwinter is a good time to throw a frog. I don't know why that would, they would have that red. That doesn't make too much sense to me. Overall, pretty epic box, guys. Let us know what you thought down below. But that was a ton of lures for only 90 bucks. What, what was your overall rating in the box? Um, I'm going to say 9 out of 10 because there wasn't a frog. You know what? I, I, I would feel fair saying there was not a top water lure in here, which is my only downside. So I would also give it a 9 out of 10. But out of all the boxes I've boxed, unboxed, which you guys have seen all the ones we have unboxed, probably my favorite. I would say that this is the most value you would get in a box, there just wasn't a frog. We're giving this thing away, guys. Don't remember, subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you guys do get a frog, uh, and Jason will hit you up, and if you guys could just send him all of your frogs. Let's just do 7,000 likes in this video. I'll go buy Jason every single frog in Bass Pro Shops, just out of stock. Like, not just one of each, every single frog. We'll just buy all of them. All the frogs? All the frogs. Is that a promise? That's a promise. 7,000 likes, you guys heard it. Hit my man Jason's from frogs. He needs a frog. We're gonna pack everything up and go fishing. We will see you guys at the farm pond. I am starting with the uh, with the vial bug. Took the one out here on the display. Put a couple of my lures into my pocket. It is windy, it is rainy, but I'm hoping with this darker color uh, vial bug here, I'm assuming that there's gonna be beds around. We just are not gonna be able to see them today. So I'm just gonna work it slow and uh, drag it around and see if we can't catch a absolute giant. Oh, I just got hit. Oh my gosh. Guys, I just got hit. I'm like 95% positive. Oh, I have ants on my legs. Awesome. Oh, got one. Got one. <laughs> I already got one. Let's go. First like two minutes. Yes. Looks like the rain's calming down a little bit, but here is a uh, fish number one. You know, like a little pounder, if even. But that was on the vial bug. I'm going to keep throwing this because that was literally my third cast with it. And uh, he bit it the second time. I casted, tore off one of my legs in the tree up there, threw right back in, and he came up and grabbed it. There might even be multiple fish right here. I don't think he's on a bed, but there's like this little mat right on the bank. Just rubbed it right on the edge, and I just yeeted him out of the water. No fight, but uh, <laughs> that was fun. That puts me on the board. If I, uh, if I lose to Jason, it's going to be embarrassing because he fishes maybe once every four years. All right. See you, girl. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna take out another one and I'm gonna rig it up. I think these are gonna be absolute gas today. What's cool about the clamshell too is it keeps your baits nice and straight. So a lot of times in those bags that don't have the uh, the clamshell, which is just like this hard casing, you can like ruin tails and stuff like that. But an easy fix for that is if you get like say like some flukes and it comes in not like a clamshell, you can actually boil some water, dangle it in there in boiling water, dangle your flukes, and you just leave it in there for like five ten seconds, pull it out, lay it straight down, and it'll actually straighten out your tails. So you can kind of save some like curved baits by just boiling some water it's what i used to do all the time back when i could only buy like one pack of flukes for the month i'd make them last
There we go. There we oh no, I lost him. Oh, he's, do you have one? I had one on, I lost it. Oh my gosh, was it big? Ah, uh, that was maybe like, felt like maybe three or four. A three or a four? Oh, snap. All right, yeah, I, that's the one lure I wish I had was that. And honestly, that rattle trap with all this wind and rain, that noise could really draw on the fish. Because a lot of times when fish can't see, they use those lateral lines and they'll hear and they'll feel. And uh, Jason's definitely got some, some good baits for that. Dude, I can't believe I've never been bit there before. Oh, I got another one. This mask, this mask's loaded. <laughs> but it's loaded with little males. So cool, just off the rip. Already being able to catch them, because last time we came to this spot, we actually skunked, because <laughs> there was a ton of rain. Definitely worth coming out fishing in the rain. See you, buddy. I'm so glad we came out, though, because it's gonna be raining the next seven days, but in the spring, guys, whenever your spring is, right, it's like normally March for Florida, or North Florida and Georgia, wherever you guys are, whatever your spring is, make sure you get out and go fishing. It's, in my opinion, by far, like I know fall is super hyped, but spring is by far, in my opinion, the best time to go fishing. When the spawn's going on, post-spawn they get hungry, pre-spawn they're hungry. Fish are just eating and active during the springtime. It's the best time to fish. So, what's your plan on beating Norm? Beating Norm? <clears throat> well, I didn't get a frog, so I'm not too confident, but I just gotta switch to my spot. Guys, even though me and Jason are kind of having like a little competition, I really want Jason to just crank a giant. Uh, I was there when he caught his PB on a frog, actually. <laughs> uh, he it was getting out of backlash for like probably 25 minutes. And his frog was sitting out there and then a seven pounder just blew up on it in the middle of a lake we were fishing. Oh, I got another one. Oh my gosh, he stole it. Oh, why was I talking? I'm gonna have to get another, dude, they're, just, they're swiping my bait. I'm not even moving. They are stacked on this bank. This is ridiculous. Let's see if we can get that fish that stole my uh, <laughs> my vile bug. This, is, I'm telling you guys, this lure is amazing. And you can use it as a chatterbait trailer too if you rig it sideways. Those little two tails kick in. I mean, just just a sauce. So guys, there's a ton of brush down by this tree. Uh, this water used to be like crystal clear. But the problem is, whenever it rains out here, this farm pond is kind of like down on a slope. So all this mud runs in the water, really dirties it up. And it costs a ton of money for water treatment. Uh, so they kind of just let it naturally come back. So when the water is super, oh my gosh, I have one. Got him, got him. Please be good, please be good. I think he's just a dink, but he grabbed it. Oh, it's not a bad one. <laughs> Jason, oh no, I lost him. It's fine, I get two, like a two and a half. My biggest one so far, I was literally about to say, J Jason, you passed up on the fish. You walked right down there. And as soon as I was about to talk some trash, the fish jumped off. So that was 100% my fault. I was focused on the trash talk more than the fish landing. At least it wasn't a giant. <laughs> Or else I would have been mad. He didn't fight pretty good though, but he ran straight at me. But as I was saying, guys, so the water's super dirty right now, so you can't see anything. But when it was clear, I could see a ton of brush piles all lined up next to the side of this tree. And fish were stacking here. I stood here and probably caught like 10 fish because it's really the, like the main structure in the whole entire lake is this tree and all the brush piles to the right side of it. So they like to hang out. The bait fish likes to get up, hide in the brush, and the bass are right there behind those bait fish. Dang it. And guys, I'm gonna switch up lures. It's just so hard when you get two fish on your first five casts with one lure to switch it up. But we're gonna go through a lot of the baits in the juggernaut box today. I might even steal one of Jason's because I kind of want to try throwing a trap out here. It's just got me thinking that there could be fish chasing shad out here. There's a ton of shad in this pond. We're at the cow farm. You gotta watch out for cow poop. I don't know what this fuzzy stuff is. That's new from the last time I've been here. I don't even know where the cows go in the rain. I guess they got like a little, little house to hang out in. I don't know what they do, but they are not out here right now, which I am fine with because they always look at me in some weird way. So guys, this bank has the most mats out of all of the pond. So you can see here on the edge and I feel like in the springtime, they like to get up under that stuff and right up on the edge of it. So I'm gonna swim this little craw on the edge. Might even actually switch it up to the swim bait here pretty soon and then hop it when I get over there to the little main part of the pond, bring it up as close as I can, and even maybe flip it into uh, the mats. See if we can't pull a giant out. All right, guys, well, we've walked the bank for a little bit now, and we're getting to a little bit of shallower water, so I'm gonna break out the uh, exo swims in the four inch. What I like to do, so I don't have to tie that much, I have it rigged on the same Texas rig I was throwing the, uh, the vile bug on or the vile craw. I can't remember which one it was, um, but we have the swim bait on here. 
shallow water. This pond over here is really shallow too. They connect underneath, but super shallow. Uh, figured I'd swim some stuff, try to get a reaction strike because besides those two that I caught under the mat, I have not had another one. And we've walked maybe half the pond. So decided to make the switch up. See if we can't get anything to hit a reaction bait. Just like to try different styles, kind of figure out what the fish are doing. Helps you figure them out a little bit quicker. Ooh, you saw that wake? Come on. There's a big fish in there. He's there, come on. Oh, dang. That's sick. I'm gonna hit him right on the head right here. Come on, he's gotta be right there. Oh my gosh, he was in the mat. Oh, he's running. That was so cool. I saw him the first time move, threw back in there, let it sit. And that is a chunky, <laughs> chunky bass on the exo swim. Holy cow, that is a meatball. Let's go. Look at how big that bass is. <laughs> That's a fat, healthy bass. And he was just sitting right in the middle of that mat. I casted at it probably 10 times. Saw exactly where his like boil was when I moved my exo swim past the first time. Popped it on his head. I don't know if he's on the bed. He doesn't have a bloody tail. Wanted it super slow. Just let it sit there long enough. Not having it. <laughs> there we go. So that's another lure off, checked off the list, the exo swim. It's weird because I even worked it like the vile craw. Just hopped it on the bottom. See you, girl. Maybe, I, I don't know if that was on a bed or not. It was really weird because there should have been other casts where it would have bit it coming through. I had to leave it there and then I saw the whole mat roll again. <laughs> Some of the most intense fishing is when you see the whole mat just move. You're like, oh goodness, it's about to happen. Don't worry about this. This didn't happen. I mean, Norm is currently beating you. What do you have to say to that? Uh, maybe I was a little uh, overconfident. I still got a chance. You know, something could happen. Yeah. Some, if I had a frog, maybe. But no frogs. <sighs> no frogs. When we go to the next spot, one, we can try to find a frog. <laughs> if we can't find a frog, I'll give you uh, some stuff that I'm like really positive would work over there. But dude, I feel like the spinnerbait should just I don't know, man. crank too. It did last time. Got him in the mat. That was so cool. Dude, he's freaking, <laughs> he's got me in there. I don't know if he's giant or if he's a dink. Is he still on there? Oh, I see, I see a fin, I see a fin. Dude, he followed it up to the mat. Wait, is that a crappie? What is this? Oh, it's a bat. Oh, my shoes, no. That is the weirdest colored bass I've ever seen. He looks like a crappie because he's so pale. Dude, what in the world? Wait, it's, no, that's gotta be it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, mud me. <laughs> that would, dude, I couldn't tell if it was going to be a one pounder or a, or a 10. <laughs> he had me wrapped up. Gave her a little wash. That's not a bad one either. This It's crazy how many like big fish are in this like little pond over here. Very similar greens and paleness as a crappie does. So I was so confused when I saw the tail flipping up. Almost looked like a massive like state record crappie. Another one on the exo swim. I was swimming at that time. Swam it up to the mat. She came up and grabbed it right before it came out of the water. Feels good, feels good. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Guys, look at all these little tadpoles in here. So the bass are spawning and so are the frogs. Look at, there's like hundreds of tadpoles. See if I can catch one. Look at that, a little tadpole. Jason, I think the frog bite might be on, dude. The frogs are spawning, there's tadpoles. There's not a single season out of the year where it's no frog, dude. <laughs> Summertime, frog. Fall frog i hear a frog croaking somewhere there dude we gotta get you a frog when we walk back past the car we're getting you a frog we successfully did a lap around this pond so we i think we caught four jason had a big one on um i lost like a two pounder right up here but we're actually about to go to another lake that this lake right here flows into this one and i went ahead and tied on a weightless rig i was weighted with a 316 ounce bullet weight now i'm gonna go weightless with the uh Lake Fork little like, they're basically just like Cinco's like a lunker log. 
um, with a little bit of a segmented tail so they move around a little bit better. Actually, this would be perfect for wacky rigging now that I look at it. But we're just gonna go weightless Texas rig because there's a ton of grass and hydrilla and it'd be super hard to get something weighted through, at least for the first half of like, this is actually more like a lake. This one's more like a pond. Uh, but for the first half, so many pads that a bullet weight that's not big just gets wrapped up too easy. So we're gonna start with something weightless and let it naturally float down. Last time I did it, we got some giants. And I think Jason's cousin's already been over here fishing and Jason's cousin has a frog. <laughs> so I think Jason will finally be able to fish with a frog. I figured for the challenge, like, I don't think you guys are gonna get mad at Jason for fishing with a frog. So I'll keep fishing with all the lures from the box, but Jason just loves him some frogs. There it is. All right, Luke, prepare to lose. Just watch him eat it. <laughs> that was epic. Holy cow. Literally just sight fished him. Yes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was the first one on the weight list, guys. I was super quiet, just not thinking anything was going to happen. Literally looked like a bluegill was coming up to eat. It looked so small in the water. I mean, not a big fish by any means, but definitely looked way small in the water. So I was just like, oh, a little a little bass is checking out my worm. And then I saw him eat it and I was like, oh snap. First one here at the uh, at the new pond, you know, maybe like little pounder, but I'll take them. Anything that pulls the line is a good time. I noticed he was looking at it for a while, like very slowly coming up to it. What I think I'm gonna do is really slowly work this worm. This little worm has like a really cool action on the way down just super slow sinking almost too slow i almost want to put a weight on it but there's so much hydrilla at the bottom that if you uh have a bullet weight and it gets into the hydrilla they can't really find the worm all that well at least i found out here it's not like that good hydrilla either that's healthy it's like just mush Oh, he hit it top water. Oh, he missed it. How do you miss that? How do you miss that? Oh my gosh, come on. Okay, we're good. Come back for it, please. I don't know how he missed it. He hit it right there. He got it. Got it that time. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so much fun. It's like, freaking action sport when you're casting up into this grass so the weightless is so good guys is if i was weighted he wouldn't be able to find it but since it sits up there in the strike zone for longer he can come grab it look at that super dark bass so you can tell he's been hanging out in that grass see you man and then feel free to post on instagram this is like we're not hiding anything about this it's like you know post and there we go Guys, I'm on a conference call with Ketchko right now. Zoe, um, I want everybody to spin. Oh, I've got him. He's on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here. Nice. So, guys, I forgot I had a conference call about an upcoming like content week with Ketchko and doing like an uncharted like little series. So, I'm on the phone with everybody who works there right now on a big virtual meeting with one rod and yak pack and all the Ketchko guys. But the fish are biting, so. <laughs> I'm showing him every fish I catch. That's not a bad one. Like, probably pound and a half, or he slammed it too. See you, buddy. Oh, guys, I'm trying to get this video done, but the sun's going down. It finally stopped raining. And right when there's good fishing conditions, that last hour before the sun goes down, I have two meetings but i just want to fish i think they understand that they're fishing companies so they kind of get it like they understand what they what they did bringing me on and we're catching fish on the uh <laughs> the mystery taco box so on the phone with them as we're catching fish with their lures what do we got one two three four looks like mostly casting and two spinning okay um so yeah and if you if anybody wants to bring Oh, another one. Make sure you got a couple rods and rails if you're driving. That's the easiest thing to do. 
He's on again. <laughs> My bad. This call was weird timing. I'm listening though, I promise. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> okay, um, sorry. Guys, I'm sorry, I'm so quiet right now. I guess it's kind of cool, you guys can see some behind the scenes of what we do, I guess. The work behind it. <laughs> Us planning our trips and everything and planning content and pictures and camera guys and video ideas, all that stuff. So it's cool you guys can see the behind the scenes, but I'm not gonna stop fishing. See you, buddy. These mats, they're not even mats, it's actually the grass that's out here. So it's land, logs laying all over them because it used to be a whole forest, cut it all down. So there's logs under these pads and you just let this worm sink super slow and they're just grabbing it. To get me by until my new wheels and tires came in. Oh, I got one, hold up, my bad. Oh, oh, he's on. Oh my gosh, dude, I'm one handing them right now. <laughs> gosh, dang it, why am I so good at fishing? I'm sorry, Yak Pack. <laughs> now I'm on the phone with Yak Pack, and there's another one. Jeez. I am just, I'm born for this, honestly. Mystery Tackle Box, Catchco, you guys chose the right guy to slam your box. Because I just keep catching them. We're on the phone. I'm not even supposed to be fishing right now. Not allowed to, but, you know, when the weather shapes up like this after a big rain, that's when these big girls go out. When that rain comes up, water level comes Oh, what did you say, Yak Pack? I said we are literally on a business call, and you're catching fish. Yeah. <laughs> How was that from your point of view? It was hilarious, because Elon was like, oh, wait, Norm's got one, and everybody looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> and it happened multiple times. I felt so, I felt so bad, because I thought they were like, Thought maybe I was like disrespecting the call, but I was just on a, I was on a hot bite, dude. You know, you know how it goes. I'm gonna let my fish go real quick. <laughs> See ya, buddy. Yeah. Sorry, folks. We had many phone calls going on. I couldn't really react to my fish catches because I was trying to be respectful on the call. But you know, when the fish are biting, the fish are biting. To be fair, these calls next week we're collabing with One Rod, with Yak Pack, and some other creators too, like Fisher Yin, guys I haven't fished with before. So we're gonna have like six people videos where we have a ton of groups. We're doing a ton of offshore like saltwater stuff, freshwater stuff. So I'm really excited for that content. So but let's uh, let's let's catch a couple more fish now that I can cast with both hands. I was just holding my phone like this and casting with one hand could only cast like 15 yards. What? All right, I'm up. Oh, I got one. There he is. <laughs> yes. I mean, these are all like pretty solid fish. Like, or at least big mouths. They're all a little skinny. Boom. Another one on the worm. Let's go. Yeet. All right, that's uh, <laughs> that's the day. I caught a lot of fish. Nothing like giant, which I, we were hoping for, because there's giants in these. Jason, if you just had a frog earlier, I think it probably would have. Yeah. Uh, no. No, I don't think a frog would have worked. Yeah, the Juggernaut box, though, was cool overall. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below so you can be entered to win the other Juggernaut box that I have. All right, guys. Until the next fishing adventure, Fish Bump, I'm out of here.